G'day, welcome to Todd's Kitchen. Making popcorn at home really does seem to be a lost art. Everyone just goes straight for the microwave ones, but it's actually so much more expensive. So join me today as I show you the proper way how to make popcorn. Okay, so first off, I'm going to show you the massive cost saving between making your own popcorn and buying the one that you use in the microwave. Now, for example, the microwave ones come in about 75 to 100 grams, and they cost about $1.50 a packet. Now, of course, the prices are going to change depending on the brand and the area, but I'm just using it as a rough guide. So here I have one kilo of popcorn kernels. And this is a one kilo bag, and it cost me $2.50. So if I was to buy the equivalent amount of the microwave popcorn, it would cost me about $23. So just by popping it yourself on one kilo of popcorn, you actually save $20. So personally, it's a no-brainer. Now we're going to start with a pot on the stove. Now I have the temperature at a tad over medium. So to this pot I'm just going to add about two tablespoons of vegetable oil. You really don't need too much. Basically just enough to lightly coat the bottom. And simply let that sit there for about two minutes just to warm up. Okay, so once the oil is warmed up, I'm going to add in about half a cup of corn. And what we're going to do is take it straight off the heat. So we want it to normalize. So basically we're going to, we want the temperature to stabilize so we're going to count to 30 so basically 30 seconds but i find just count to 30 and it works out just the same now the reason we're doing this it just helps get all the kernels to the same temperature that way when they start popping they're popping more closer to each other instead of far apart which will stop a lot of your corn from burning okay so once it's been 30 seconds just place it back on the heat and of course chuck on a lid so you don't have to do anything just now we're just going to wait till the popcorn starts popping and when it does start popping, what we're going to do is we're going to start moving the pot back and forth. What that does is it just helps all the hard bits, which are the kernels, stay on the bottom so they can still pop. And of course, the lighter ones start moving to the top. That way you get a proper distribution of cooked popcorn. And you'll have less at the end that just simply aren't popped. Okay, so as you can see, they're just starting to pop now. Now, of course, I'm using half a cup. But honestly, it just depends on the size of the pot that you're using. You can do a full cup if you like. Just make sure you have a pot that can accommodate it. Okay, so they're really starting to pop now. So start moving back and forth like this. Just every few seconds. Okay, so once it slows down to about one or two pops every second, then we're going to take it off the heat. If you leave it on any longer, you're just going to burn the rest of the popcorn that's in the pot. And we're only going to couple now, so just simply take it off and you're done. And there we have some popcorn. You can add some butter, salt, whatever you like. It is completely up to you. Now the microwave one takes about, I think, two minutes, two minutes, 30, give or take. And this took me about four minutes to make. So basically, you're saving $20 a kilo, and it only takes an extra one to two minutes to make. It really is a dying art that really should be resurrected. But there's always one thing that when you make your own compared to the microwave that you just can't dispute, and that's that it tastes simply delish. G'day, welcome to Todd's Kitchen. Most people know that everything tastes better with bacon, and this recipe is no exception. So join me today as I make my version of a maple bacon popcorn. Now this recipe has two separate types of flavors that are both working together sweet and savory. Well, we're going to start with our savory first. So I have a fry pan on a stove on a medium to high heat and I've got a few rashers of bacon that are just roughly cut up and we're just going to place those onto our fry pan. And we're just going to stir fry this bacon just for a couple minutes until it starts to brown up. You don't want to burn it, you want it to take it off just before it starts to get to that really crispy stage. Now, once our bacon is cooked, we're going to need some popcorn. You can make popcorn any way that you like. You can do it on the stove, in the microwave, or you can buy it pre-popped. So into a mixing bowl, I'm going to place in our popcorn. Then our lovely pieces of cooked bacon. And now for our sweet ingredient, some maple syrup. So I'm just going to drizzle that right on. Oh, yummy. Now you can use honey or golden syrup if you like. So once that's all in, it's just a matter of mixing it up until it's well combined. 
Now once it's combined, it is ready to serve, and that's how simple this quick snack is to make. So it certainly is different from your regular old just popcorn and say butter or salt. So when you're watching a movie, give this a version a go because I know that you will love it. And so will your friends too. It's that lovely mixture of that sweet and savoury working together. And let's be honest, it's bacon. Everything tastes better with bacon. But when those two flavours working together with that bacon, it tastes simply delish. G'day, welcome to Todd's Kitchen. This is a fantastic slice recipe that has so many flavours and they all work perfectly together. So join me today as I make my version of a marshmallow popcorn and m and slice. Now we're going to start this off by melting a couple of ingredients. So into your mixing bowl I'm going to place in half a cup of butter followed by one packet of marshmallows and I'll leave a list of ingredients in the description below. So now I'm going to place this into the microwave for 30 seconds at a time and we're going to stir it each time until it's completely melted and nicely combined. Now as you can see it is nicely melted and well combined. So next I'm going to add some popcorn. Now you can make your own popcorn by popping it in the microwave or on the stove or you can buy it pre-popped. It's really up to you how you prepare it. So I'm just going to pour my popcorn into our bowl. Then I'm going to add a cup of salted nuts. I'm using a mixed nuts and a cup of M&Ms. So simply now all you have to do is just mix it through until it's all completely combined. And lastly I'll just have a greased baking dish. So we're just going to place our popcorn mixture right in just like that. Now all we have to do is just place in the fridge for about half an hour to give it a chance to set. Now I've just taken them out of the fridge, cut them up and they're ready to serve. And they look and they're going to taste delicious. So they truly are an incredibly simple treat to put together. A couple of minutes of melting, you whack it all together, put it in the fridge and it's set in no time. Now especially with that lovely taste of marshmallow, then you have the added popcorn plus the nuts. And let's not forget those lovely chocolate M&Ms. You put all those flavour combinations together in one neat little package like this and you know it's going to taste simply delish. G'day, welcome to Todd's Kitchen. Everyone loves popcorn, especially during a movie, but it can get rather boring, especially when it's all white and stuff. So I'm gonna make it so much more colorful, so much more delicious. So join me today as I make my version of rainbow popcorn. Now to start off with, I have a pot on the stove on a medium to high heat. So to that I'm going to add in about 200 grams of sugar, followed by a couple of tablespoons of water. So this is just how we're going to make up our sugar syrup. And we're going to keep this over the medium heat until the sugar has turned into a lovely syrup. Okay, so once the syrup has become clear and all the sugar is dissolved, just take it straight off the heat. Now I've just divided our sugar between four equal containers. Of course, the amount of containers you use really just depends on how many colors you want to use. So I'm just going to put a few drops in of the colors I intend to use. So for this one, I'm going to use blue and just mix it through to get to the desired shade that you're after. 
And we're just going to do the same for the other three colors. Now you'll find when you add the colors, they're going to start to cool down pretty quickly. So I've just placed this into the microwave just to liquefy it again. And we're just going to now add it to our popcorn. So once added, just simply mix it through until all the popcorn is completely coated. Okay, so as you can see, it's nicely coated. Now I did put this back in the microwave for a few more seconds because it did start to cool down pretty quickly. But that was enough to liquefy it again and cover all the popcorn. So just continue on until you've done all your colors. Now I've just mixed all our popcorn together and there we have some lovely and delicious rainbow popcorn. Now popcorn and salt taste pretty good, but there's only one way to make it better and that is by mixing it with sugar. But if you're gonna do it, why not color it? Cause it just looks so much better and it'd be perfect for any type of party, especially a colorful party. But once you've colored all your popcorn in that lovely sugar syrup, and you start having a couple of pieces, you'll say this rainbow popcorn tastes simply delish. Now to start this off, we're going to use a microwave safe bowl. So into the bowl, we're going to place in about three tablespoons of butter and one regular packet, which is about 180 grams of marshmallows. Now we're gonna place this into the microwave for say 30 seconds at a time and give it a good stir each time until everything is completely melted and well combined. Okay, so as you can see, it's nicely melted and just give it a good stir just to mix the butter in with the marshmallows. Now once that's mixed through, I'm just going to add some red food coloring. Just about a tablespoon should do. And mix that in. So it's nice and bloody. <laughs> now once mixed through, I'm going to add in some popped popcorn. Now you can use the microwave or you can do it on the oven. It doesn't make any difference. So I'm going, about a, I'm going to put about a standard bag, size bag in. And I'm using some gloves. Now as a hint, I've just given a quick grease, just with some cooking spray oil. That'll just stop everything from sticking to my hands. So just give it a good mix through. Well, it won't completely stop, but it'll make a big difference, trust me. <laughs> now lastly, I have some non-stick baking paper here. So I'm just going to grab, say, a small amount at a time. Then start shaping them into a decent sized ball and you can make them as big as you want or as small as you want. And I can tell you from personal life experiences, some brains are literally smaller than others. So we're just going to place it onto the parchment paper there. And just give it a quick tap down just on top, not too much, because brains aren't exactly round. And for the final effect, I'm just going to use the handle of a knife and just tap on just a little bit in the center, which will give that indentation between the left and the right side of the brain. And there we have our delicious popcorn brains. <laughs> they really are incredibly simple to make. And I found using the popcorn, it really does make a brain look, well, even more brainy. But you just have to serve these delicious, disgusting looking things at your next Halloween party because they're going to taste simply delish. <laughs> and they'll easily store a few days in a sealed container in the fridge.